Okay, so in the first video, we took a look at, um, you know, we took a look at kind of this takeaways, the key takeaways. And in the second video, we talked about the importance of making videos. And then I recorded a third video, and I recorded the third video all like this. So when I was talking about my screen, you couldn't see anything. And, uh, and so now I'm doing the third video again. And uh, to do that third video again, um, I'm hopefully picking up where we left off after the second video because the second video is basically like let's record videos make sure you record videos and now in this video we're going to talk about this week one structure and uh, and then we're also going to talk about due dates and uh, resubmits and how that could if you use those effectively that could allow you to minimize the menial work and increase the high quality work and so um, that's what you want to spend your time on is the high quality work and not the menial work as an instructor. That's my philosophy. So uh, we're going to take a look at this week one structure. And so this week one structure, you know, the first thing I'm going to say is actually your uh, sort of links over here, the structure of the course that students see over on the left, super important. And keeping this as simple as possible and ranking it in importance from high importance to low importance right so simple syllabus got to read it right and you know making sure that students understand they need to read the syllabus and then when they come into the syllabus making the items that need to be clear super clear I'm not sure if I said this in the previous video I think I did but the simple syllabus is awesome because it's not your responsibility to make sure that everything on the syllabus is in compliance with whatever regulations need to be on there for the college to be in compliance with whatever other institutions Right? You just use a simple syllabus, and you are in compliance. And, uh, and then you don't even have to submit it to the business division office. You just email them and say, I'm using simple syllabus, and you're done. Right? So it decreases your workload and keeps you in compliance and keeps you, uh, you know, more on point and more effective. Right? You're teaching the way you should be teaching. So highly recommend simple syllabus. But making sure that things that students need to do, very clear. You are required to read the simple syllabus, right? So, like, you know, when students come back, like, you know, two weeks before, you know, week 16, they're like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what did you miss? You're required to read simple syllabus and send simple syllabus. Why didn't you see that? All right. So, you know, ranking these links here in order of importance from highest importance to least importance and getting rid of anything that you don't need there, getting rid of anything that will cause confusion, keeping it as simple as possible. Like simple syllabus, assignments, discussions, grades, right? Like you do assignments in this class, you do discussions in this class, and then here are your grades. And then there's people because human connection is important and studies show that. And, and then there's pages and files, right? Some files you'll need throughout at different places in the course, you'll find them there. But basically, right, simple, straightforward, assignments, discussions. It's not like, you know, cafe, you know, like, you know, computer cafe, right? Where students are like, what is a computer cafe? <laughs> you know, like people have made name discussions, weird things, you know, it's just like, boom, that's what it is. And so they come into the class and they see it's week one and then they see welcome video, right? And then there are the lecture videos. And we already saw this, I think that lecture videos are week one, watch the week one lecture, week two, watch the week two lectures, week three, watch the week, th week three lectures, right? And this changes, so every week it increments. You know, second week I'll say week two, third week I'll say week three. And then when you go into assignments, it's all week one, week two, week three, right? And then when you go into discussions, it's all week one, week two, week three. So it becomes pretty transparently clear, and I also show this to the students in the welcome video, that each week you just do the stuff for that week. Week one, you do the week one assignments and the week one discussions. Week two, you do the week two assignments and the week two discussions clear <laughs> and then there's videos for each step in that process so that students understand what they do at each step so that's the week one kind of structure and that saves you a lot of menial work because if i was and here we move into due dates and resubmits because if i was trying to do the bureaucratic management of all of the assignments i have and i have a tremendous amount of assignments a lot of small steps um you know, and I had to go in and change the due date on each of those every time I rolled over into a new semester and replicated a class. Ugh, now I have to go in and enter the right date for that class, right? Or, uh, you know, uh, when does it become visible and then when does it go away and when is the deadline and how much do they get if they're two days late, 
right? How much do I reduce? You know, and then there's all this bureaucratic menial work that I've got to do, like, okay, this student turned it in three days late, so I grade it, and then I do a calculation, and I subtract this amount for being this three days late. That's a lot of work. And then that adds up when you get, you know, 150, 200 students. Uh, that can create a lot of time. And so you want to minimize that menial work. And so the approach that I've taken is to have this week uh, one, week two, week three, and, and to not have any due dates in my class except for the discussion. So the discussions keep them on point each week. You got to show up every week and do at least the discussion. But like I understand that we're here at the community college and a lot of the students have many demands on their life. Right? They might have one job or multiple jobs. They have family that they have to take care of. And they might have a, uh, a week where their week just explodes and they can't get their schoolwork done. Right? And so I want to teach the students self-responsibility. And with self-responsibility comes, you know, with, with flexibility comes self-responsibility. And so giving them the flexibility that, like, if you can't get the work done this week, Great, hopefully next week has more bandwidth for you. Get caught up, right? But this is the guideline for what you should be doing each week. And if your life blows up for one week, put it off, get, get stuff done the second week, get caught up. And so you should be staying on track with this. And if you're falling off track, you'll he at, for a couple of weeks, you'll hear from me. And I'll say, why haven't you turned in any work for the last three weeks? What's going on? You know, if you continue not to turn in work, you're gonna be in trouble. Do you wanna be in this class? What's happening? And, um, and so that kind of thing of having no due dates for the assignments, except for the ultimate final due date for the class, of course, right, gives students flexibility and it helps them learn to operate in a results-oriented process, right? So in a results-oriented environment. So there's process-oriented environments and results-oriented environment. And process-oriented environments are like, you must be here at eight, punch the clock, you get 12 to one for lunch, and then you punch out at five. And if you're 15 minutes late after lunch, we're gonna dock your pay, right? That's process oriented. That's like, this is due here, this is due there. This, And I want the students to learn results oriented. So I don't care when you do the work, just do the work, do a good job and get it done and pace yourself in doing it. And so I'm monitoring the pacing, but that's much easier to monitor and to email, you know, and to let the students know like, hey, you know, what's happening? As opposed to like, you know, doing the menial work of like, it got turned in late and, you know, I have to calculate that. Or when I replicate my class, I have to rethink about when, you know, and change dates for when things will be due. And so uh, this week one, week two, week three thing uh, really works well for me, having, flex having no due dates except for the ultimate due date in the class. And then uh, I added in this thing in the one recording I did. And then the resubmit, Right? That's also for me, like if a student wants to, that helps minimize the menial work. If a student wants to redo an assignment, great, redo it. If you didn't care for your grade, it's like, well, you know, uh, you have the chance to do it again. And that's like life, right? Like if you don't succeed at something in life, most of the time you could try again. <laughs> you know, like a business didn't work out, you could go out and you could try starting another business. And, uh, you know, innumerable stories like that's how we all have gotten to where we are by you know successes and failures and we fail and we learn and then we you know move forward and build upon what we learned and what didn't go well the first time and so the resubmits really kind of also helps with that where students can resubmit um, their work and have it be you know regraded and then you know if they do better they get to keep the higher score and so that for me is a learning opportunity for the students, right? They're working, they're working the material again. They're going back through it. And like in life, if you do something better a second time, you know, that often pays off. So that's how it is in the class. And that, you know, really minimizes a lot of that management stuff, which can take up so much time in a class. So that's, uh, that's how I structure my classes. Very clear links over here on the side. And, uh, you know, this week one, week two, week three structure, and then videos at every step. Um, and so that helps the students focus on learning course material as opposed to learning how the course, you know, learning how to learn the course material. It, it decreases my workload because it decreases student confusion to keep it really clear and simple. And it increases the ease of replication, right? There's less for me to change when I replicate my course and simple syllabus is part of that. 
And uh, when you build your courses, just focus on simplicity and clarity and create consistent weekly routines and have it kind of be the same thing every week and provide frequent, regular, and small work, small steps, not big steps, creating those small wins and creating that momentum. Cre include videos for each step in the learning process. Name things well. Simplify, really focus on that. And redos and resubmits, and then there's the screen recording software and the camera. So I hope you found this helpful. I'm interested in seeing your course structure for this semester if you want to share. So we have a discussion and uh, if we go back to this part in our Biz Division resources, and uh, if you go into faculty share discussion, clarity and naming, clarity in your online course structure here, uh, create a video showing us your course structure. So uh, if you have that for the spring, uh, and then post the video somewhere like YouTube, then provide a link to the video. You could also share new ideas you've learned that you will use in future online classes to increase clarity in your course structure. Now granted, the uh, flexibility in due dates, right? Like, you know, working with our student population to help them succeed because of their life demands. Uh, other faculty choose to have those due dates and deadlines, and that's your choice. That's your academic freedom to determine how you structure your class and what else you are teaching in addition to the, the material. I've chosen to teach uh, self-responsibility, self-reliance through that flexibility, because with flexibility comes that responsibility. Um, but there's also certainly something to be said for due dates. So that isn't something that, you know, that's something that is like, uh, could go either way, depending upon um, your perspectives. So I just want to make sure I mention that. And then same with resubmits. I know that sometimes do or die, you know, uh, some people believe in that. And, you know, a job interview example came to mind. You either get it or you don't. But if you don't, you can then go get another job interview. <laughs> so I kind of think that, there, you know, there's redos in life. So I let redos happen in my classes. So anyhow, that's, uh, that's how I structure my classes. But I hope you gained something useful from this. I appreciate being uh, your colleague and, uh, and uh, enjoy our interactions and collaborations and helping us all be the best instructors we can be. See you next time.